have here is the N950. Uh, this is a bare bone shell that we have here at CUK that we upgrade. We're going to upgrade it to an 8700, two 512 gig NVMe drives, two 16 gig sticks of 2400 for a total of 32 gigs of RAM, and a two terabyte storage drive. And all you're going to really need to do this upgrade is just a basic Phillips head. We're going to get this going. First things first is what we're going to do is we're going to take the battery out as we've uh, been told by our commenters, which is it's true, we just haven't been doing it. It's always best practice to remove your batteries. Uh, obviously this one was simple, so some of them you're actually going to have to remove from the internal components, little clips and whatnot. This one is pretty simple here. It's only going to be three Phillips head screws and that removes this easy access panel. Slide toward you, lift up out of the way and now you have full access essentially to everything that you want to upgrade on this laptop. We already put some little uh, thermal pads here down for our NVMe drives so that's going to be uh, a necessary thing that you're going to need to do here. I'm going to start with the simple upgrades here which obviously is going to be your memory. Memory is always the easiest. Once again you're going to put it on that like 30 to 45 degree angle. Make sure it's seated and then just clamp it down. Make sure you get it clamped on both ends. Once again, 30, 45 degree angle, clamp it down. Next thing we're gonna do here is install our hard drive. And these are gonna be the screws you need to secure the hard drive to the little bracket that they have here. And this little bracket here, it only installs one direction, so make sure you keep that in mind when you're doing the install. And once you have the little bracket attached, all you wanna do is slide it in here to your state of ports. Nice and easy. Don't force it. If you have to force it, it means you did it wrong. And it's really as simple as that. And then we'll go on to our NVMe upgrade. Again, we put these little heat pads in place here. That's going to help keep these things cool. Should be fairly close to being right under the controller on the NVMe drive. You'll see here that it actually comes with additional mounting posts. And these are if you have shorter NVMe drives. In this scenario, we have the 2280 which is, is already designed to accept the 2280 form factor. Um, but you'll see here, it has these other little posts. That's if you had a 2260 or a 2242, you would use these little posts here to install that. And look like standoffs that you would use for a motherboard installation. Are the shorter ones typically less capacity? Uh, not necessarily. They just don't really make them. Um, they're not really a standard form factor. Mm -hmm. You'll find that some companies will make specialty products that receive like smaller ones like that but generally speaking everything is 2280 uh, it's definitely like 95 percent of the market is 2280 and maybe even more than that being smaller they're more expensive not anymore because no one buys them so they kind of just dump them now if they actually have stock you won't get NVMEs in that form factor you'll only be able to get like SATA M.2s in that form factor generally speaking nowadays they'll probably be cheap because no one actually uses that form factor so if you can find an SSD that you're looking for if you don't want to go NVME you might be able to find a shorter one that's cheaper next thing we're going to do here is install the processor and that's going to be your 8700 this is a desktop series that goes in this laptop what you're going to want to do is actually remove this fan first you notice here that this heat sink is kind of like seated down in here. You won't be able to actually remove this whole piece until you remove the fan. So you can just unplug your fan. Should be a couple of screws around it that's secured in place. Nothing too crazy. And we did it. Two screws and then you have a little um, positioning post. Uh, and if you're looking at this, you'll actually see that it's numbered for you. It's in this like crosshatch catty corner pattern. Same thing that you would do with like installing tires and whatnot on your vehicle. If any of you are familiar with that. That's just so you apply even pressure when you're installing your CPU and you want to get a good spread on your thermal paste. Even pressure is important. And they give you this convenient little thing that helps you lift it up. You're going to have to just carefully get that out of there. And of course we've got little heat pads and whatnot for all your little VRMs and whatnot. It's a little protective plate, that's so you don't mess up your pins. I would recommend you leave it on for the time being until you have the processor installed. So, let me go ahead and get that going. Make sure that it's nice and clean, you don't have any dust or anything like that you're going to put in here. 
and it only goes in one way, you'll see that it's actually notched. When you look at your socket here, it has these little keyed notches. You can't mess it up. And again, if you do, all right. <laughs> now that that's in there, go ahead and remove this. We have seen it sometimes where people forget to remove this piece. If you have really bad temperatures, it's because you forgot to remove this piece. Now that that's in there, just essentially gonna reverse the process. The first thing we're gonna do is put some thermal paste on here. I'm gonna use some Arctic MX4. Of course you use whatever you want, whatever your choice may be. Where are we going with that one? Honestly, it's just what I have on hand. We typically use uh, Arctic Silver 5 in-house. That's our normal thermal paste. We just had a bunch that we had in for testing and we found that essentially they're um, approximately all about the same. As long as you have a quality thermal paste, you can expect good performance. Uh, the difference being is that this doesn't require a cure time. Arctic Silver generally requires a cure time, so you'll see better temperatures after you know 24 to 48 hours of use. You'll see about a two degree drop, generally speaking. And we're not gonna use too much about a pea size. Some people like to do the crosshatch pattern. Uh, normally what I would do is actually do a line. So why I did the dot, I don't really know. I guess that's just the most common is what people see. Um, I was talking to some Intel engineers and they actually recommended that you do a thin line perpendicular to the lettering. So it actually splits evenly amongst the cores. Um, so that's where that kind of comes from. I don't know if it's whether really true or not. Generally speaking, you're gonna get a good spread as long as you do it properly anyway. Um, it's not like you're going to see like multiple degrees difference. You'll be lucky if you see a degree. That would be impressive. But this is going to go back in first. Again, the fan would block this entryway. Uh, you see this needs to like seat. And again, it's numbered for you. This is the importance of the numbers. Taking it out by the numbers is not important. Putting it in by the numbers is important. So you're, again, you're going to follow the pattern. So we've got one up here in the upper right. Then you're going to go two in the bottom left. And you're gonna go three in the upper left, and four in the bottom right. Would it make sense to put an 8700K in this? Um, generally speaking, no. They don't really have the best thermal envelope, and they're not really designed to accept a 95 watt processor. You might see that 95 watts, but you're actually gonna get better performance from our testing, at least, out of the 8700, because you'll get more consistent max speeds across your processor. So essentially what we saw in testing was that if you put an 8700K in here, you're either going to be limited electrically or you're going to be limited thermally. One of the two, and generally speaking on this one, I believe it's electric. And we'll go ahead and put this back in. Again, it has that little notch that helps you line everything up. You can't do it wrong unless you really try hard. As you can see, we actually didn't put a Wi-Fi in it, but if you were to do a Wi-Fi, it would go in this little section over here, and you have your leads that are actually just taped down. It's really nice and simple. Out of the box, it doesn't come with anything? Out of the box, this does not come with a Wi-Fi. Again, it's a bare bones unit, uh, so you will need to install a Wi-Fi as well. We're not gonna do it in this video. It's the same process as installing something like your, uh, your M.2s here. It's just a smaller, it's like a 2230 form factor. That being said, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and I'm gonna button it back up. I'm gonna put our screws back in. Anyway, that's kind of the end of the process here. Uh, again, this is the N950 uh, full upgrade.